The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you Today's Word for March 5th, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Bike Back to the Bible. I'm excited about this series, Back to the Bible. The Bible has really kind of changed me, right? Transformed me. I've been walking with God about 23 years now. And the person that I am today doesn't even resemble, not even a little bit, the person that I used to be. And I was changed by getting the word of God down in my heart. So this series, Back to the Bible, is, uh, is exciting for me. This is actually part six of this series, but today I get to a verse, I'm really kind of teaching scriptures that deal with scripture, right? So today we're gonna go to Joshua 1 and 8. This is one of the very first verses I memorized. It actually uh, was one of my very first favorite Bible scriptures, Joshua 1 and 8. And uh, it's so important to me, and there's so much in this verse that I can't deal with it for you know in just one day. So I'm calling this Joshua's Formula for Success, Part One, because I know I'm going to deal with this for a while. Even if I dealt with this verse for a month, I couldn't exhaust it, right? But we'll, we'll deal with it however the Lord le- leads me to deal with it. So let me give you a little bit uh, uh, background on Joshua as we kind of get to the story, get to Joshua one and eight, so that you can understand the context. So as a young man. Joshua was selected to be one of 12 leaders that were going into the promised land, Canaan, to spy out the land because the Lord said, I'm giving you this land. The Lord said to them, to their leader, Moses, this is the land that I promised their for- your forefathers to give you. This is something that he had promised Abraham some 400 years earlier. He said, this is your land. I've promised your forefathers to give it to, to, to him and to you. This was for Abraham and for his descendants. You are descendants of Abraham. This is your land. I'm giving you the land. This is the land. It's already yours. Send some spies into the land so that they can come back and provide evidence to the people that this is a land flowing with milk and honey. And Joshua was one of the 12 spies, 12 leaders selected to go into the land. Now they come back and unfortunately, you know, God says, hey, I'm giving you this land. It's already yours. And 10 out of the 12 spies put a no where God had already put a yes. God was saying, this is already your land. 10 out of 12 spies came back and put a no. They didn't see things from God's perspective. Only two, Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able to do what God is saying. It doesn't matter that the land is inhabited. It doesn't matter that there are giants in in the land. God said, the same God that just parted the Red Sea, the same God that just delivered us from the hand of, of, of Pharaoh and the Egyptians, this same God that caused us to come out of Egypt with gold and silver and precious diamonds, this same God that just liberated us and delivered us he, this God has now said that this land is ours. So it's ours. We can take it. We can kill these giants. No problem. 10 out of the 12 spies developed a grasshopper mentality. They said, now we, those, those guys are just too big for us. And so we see ourselves as grasshoppers in their sight. As a matter of fact, they see us as grasshoppers too. They never had a conversation with these people. You know, fear would do crazy things to your mind. They developed the grasshopper mentality. And because of it, they preached. Basically, they gave their report. 10 gave an evil report. Two gave a good report. The millions of people believed the evil report. And so millions of people were infected with fear and millions of people died in the wilderness because of it. And they never received the promise. So 40 years later, (laughs) <laughs> this is Joshua chapter one, 40 years later, God is once again, now ready to give Canaan to the Israelites. After these people died off, he says, now that generation is dead and gone. Moses is gone. Moses is dead. Everybody from that generation has been wiped out. Now you guys get ready to receive what I promised your forefathers to give you. Now it's been some 440 years. And so now it was Joshua's responsibility to lead these people into the promised land. And, and God gave Joshua specific instructions. And, and we're going to learn some of the things he said. One of the things he said in Joshua 1 and 5 was, Joshua, you got to be strong and you got to be very courageous. For you to be the man, the woman that God called you to be, you got to be strong and you got to be very courageous. You, your, your, your heart can't pump Kool-Aid like we say in the military. No, you, you got to believe God. You got to go and take whatever God is telling you. And then in Joshua 1 and 8, this is, he says, listen to this, to this leader, Joshua. To ensure Joshua was going to remain focused, this is what he said. Joshua 1 and 8. Keep this book of the law always, always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you are careful to do, do everything that's written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous and successful. You got to 
You got to think about this. He says, you got to master your mouth. Keep the word of God in your mouth. Master your mind. You got to think about it day and night. Master your methods. You guys should got to go do it. Don't just give me lip service. Don't just talk about it. Don't just talk a good game, but you meditate it, uh, yet you speak it, but then you got to go do it. And then if you do so, you will make your own way prosperous. You will make your own way successful. I have a lot to say about this verse. But let me just kind of lay the foundation for today. So what does this mean to you today? Have five things to share with you on this Monday morning. Let's set the tone right for the whole week. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, God loves you so much that he did not allow you to be born without a purpose. He made plans for you before the world began. And just like he made plans for the Israelites, just like he made plans for Joshua. Now, once you're born again, because you might be saying, well, Rick, I don't know what those plans are. Well, once you're born again, now you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Now you can talk to God spirit to spirit and God will talk to you spirit to spirit. Once you're born again and you have God's spirit, God begins to reveal to you the plans that he made for you before the world began. And then he offers you his plans. He offers you his best. He does this by grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved. He doesn't do it because you work for it. He doesn't do it because you did everything right. He doesn't do it because you're so good. He made these plans from the foundations of the world before you did anything. He doesn't do it based on your performance. He does it simply because he's good, just like he did with the nation of Israel. He led these people out of Egypt. He made sure that they came out with possessions, with gold and silver and precious stones. And then he says, listen, you didn't do anything uh, you know, to deserve me to bring you out of Egypt. I just did that by grace. And I opened up the Red Sea by grace. Now I'm giving you the promised land. And I'm giving you the promised land by grace. You did nothing to earn it. You did nothing to deserve it. I'm giving it to you. But in this case, you're going to have to go take possession of it. I'm offering it to you by grace, but you must have the faith to go fight for it. You must have the faith to go out there and take possession of what I am giving you. Just like that, God does it with us. Once you're born again and you have the Holy Spirit, he starts to reveal to you the plans that he made for you before the world began. He then says, son, daughter, this is yours. I'm giving this to you. Not because you earned it, not because you deserve it, just because I'm so good, not because you are. This is already yours. You must then have the faith to accept it, the faith to believe it, the faith to go pursue what God has already given you. Say amen to that. All right, number two, grace does not alleviate you from doing anything, right? Because when we put all, grace puts the focus on God. Faith puts the focus on us, right? So, so grace is what God does for us, but then he requires us to take possession of God, everything he offers us by grace with our faith. So grace is how he, how he interacts with us. Faith is how we interact with him. So when he says to us, listen, this is already yours and you did nothing to earn it or to deserve it, no. The emphasis is not really on our performance at that point, but then he does give us the grace to perform. He gives us the grace to go get what he's already given us. God offered Canaan to the Israelites. He did this by grace. They did nothing to earn it or deserve it. But then he says, now, if you're going to take possession of it, you're going to have to use your faith. Why? It was the land was inhabited and it was inhabited with giants. A lot of times God will give us a promise and then he'll give you a promise for your marriage, for your children, for your finances, for your business, for your career. He'll give you a promise. And then when you look at it, man, you realize that it's going to require a fight. And that's why you must live by faith. God gives you a promise. The promise is amazing. You get excited. And then you realize that there's going to be some work required to this thing. There, there's gonna, there are some challenges. There's some obstacles that you must overcome along the way but you have to go fight to take possession of it. You have to go fight to take possession of the promises that God made for you before the world began. This is why God told Joshua, God tells us to meditate and meditate on his word and to do it day and night. Why? Because if we don't believe God, then we're gonna run from the fight. And, and if we do, we run the risk of missing out on God's best. We run the risk of not becoming the man, the woman that God called us to be. And if we do that, it's not gonna be God's fault. It will be our fault because we did not have the faith. Number three, what you focus on matters. Joshua chose to focus on the promise, Canaan, instead of the problem, the giants. And as a result, he was able to experience Canaan while millions of his contemporaries died in the wilderness. My question for you is this Monday morning, what are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on the, the promise or the problem? Are you going to focus on the promise or the problem? 
as a believer, when you focus on the promise, when you meditate God's word day and night, you'll be able to overcome every problem. Number four, as a key to godly success, when the time came for Joshua to lead the nation of Israel into the promised land, the Lord instructed Joshua to meditate on his word day and night. See, your promise may not be Canaan, but the, the principle still applies today. If you choose to meditate and meditate on God's word and to do it day and night, then yet, yeah, are you going to have challenges? Of course you're going to have challenges. But you're going to look at every challenge through the lens of faith. You're going to see things the way God sees things. And there's nothing that you cannot do when you're looking at the challenge from God's perspective. Number five, and finally, Proverbs 23 and verse 7 says, As a man thinketh, so is he. You are the way you think you are. If you think you can, or if you think you can't, either way, you are right. You are the way you think you are. This is why it's so very important to meditate, meditate on God's word, to do it day and night, to get God's word down in your heart. Because when you get the word down in your heart, you're going to start to see yourself the way God sees you. You will start to believe what God believes about you. And the day you believe what God believes about you is the day that you'll be able to see the invisible and accomplish the impossible by the grace of God. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I choose to give my attention to your word. Your words are life to me. They are health and healing to all my flesh. Your words give my life meaning. Your words provide divine direction. Your words build me up from the inside out. So I meditate and I medicate. On your word, day and night, it ministers peace to me. Your word empowers me. Like Joshua, you made plans for me before the world began, and I have the faith to access those plans. Today, I take possession of my promised land, and I am ready to kill every giant that stands in my way. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button there, so subscribe. Get the messages. And as you head into this day, listen, there may be some giants on the path that are standing in the way of what God promised. You got to be ready, like, like David did with Goliath. If God gives you a slingshot and, the, and a stone, you got to be ready to slay your giants. You got to be ready to take possession of everything God promised you. So as you head into every meeting, every conversation, all the activity that you engage in today, go and look at everything through the lens of faith. God bless you.